Now let's see what our commentators think about this issue. So joining me will be Richard Falk, Professor Emeritus of International Law with Princeton University, joining us out of Yale Kavak, and also Jahangir Mohammed, Director of the Center for Muslim Affairs in Manchester. Welcome to the show, both gentlemen. Uh, let's go to Richard first. Uh, is this uh, a joke? Because uh, which country is under attack? It's Yemeni people that are under attack, and the Britain is concerned about Saudi's security? Well, that's the uh, cover story for being concerned about maintaining arms sales that have been very profitable for the UK and given it a kind of diplomatic presence in the region that it might not otherwise have. 40% of the UK arms sales between 2010 and 2019 were to Saudi Arabia. It's, a, it's the major customer. And I think it has to be put down to that kind of economically driven diplomacy, plus the anti-Iran ideological uh, solidarity with Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. But now over to Manchester, uh, but Jahangir, uh, the Yemenis, did they have any other options apart from these retaliatory attacks that they have been launching? They are attacked and they have to defend themselves. And that's, you know, in the absence of uh, uh, any practical help on the part of international organizations or the international community. Well, I think uh, obviously um, the Saudis are bombing from the skies and attacking the, the people of Yemen. Uh, which has caused mass famine in the country and uh, people have uh, a right to uh, resist that, uh, that attack uh, uh, and of course um, the uh, Western governments have been aiding and abetting that with arms sales to Saudi Arabia so um, you know um, I think it's obvious that there's external interference in, in Yemen and the people have a right to choose their own government, uh, to choose uh, you know, uh, how they uh, elect that government and not to have one imposed on them from outside. So the Yemeni people are really defending their own sovereignty uh, and um, the, the Saudi Arabia is doing everything to subvert that. Uh, and of course, um, you know, um, Saudi Arabia is the number one arms purchaser in the world uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you would think this small country uh, uh, you know it, it's uh, it's, go it's waging a world war on somebody is buying that many arms uh, you know you wonder at times why why they are buying so many arms uh, from the United States which is the biggest arms uh, seller in the world and of course Britain is in the top five as well I think it's number two mm -hmm. or number three I don't remember Right. So obviously that plays a part, but uh, you know, ever since Lawrence of Arabia, uh, uh, the the famous British spy helped to create some of the uh, the puppet regimes in the world. Uh, there's a consistent policy from the United Kingdom in propping up families in that region. So I think uh, uh, it's not a surprise that the United Kingdom is supporting the ruling family in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. and uh, supporting it in Yemen because it sees a, a independent government in Yemen as a threat to the Saudi royal family. Yeah. Richard, if you remember, there was this uh, bill or some kind of ratification at uh, uh, Westminster calling in the government to stop or somehow curb uh, this uh, arms sale to Saudi Arabia and also given the fact that it's a known fact that those arms provided by the U.S. and the U.K. and also France they're being used to take most of the civilian lives in Yemen. So is there any justification for this, apart from, as you said, just uh, uh, caring about not the people's lives, it's only material gains that the UK is trying to gain? Uh, it's, it certainly uh, does, there certainly doesn't seem to be a justification there. Unfortunately, are not clear international law prohibitions on supplying uh, weaponry to foreign governments and so in a sense it's a matter of diplomatic discretion on the part of the UK it's surprising in light of the fact that the Biden administration that which has done some 
questionable things in the region that you discussed earlier, uh, but one thing it one constructive thing it did was to stop the shipment of offensive weaponry to Saudi Arabia in the hope of securing a peace negotiation in Yemen. And this really breaks that the UK initiative the UK refusal to join with the US in this way really breaks the momentum that might have uh, led even the Saudis to think that they're pursuing a lost cause. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jahangir, one last question for you. I mean, when Western countries like the US and uh, the UK, we also have France and maybe some others, they are selling weapons and among them to Saudis and you know how they're being used in, in Yemen. Uh, so, I mean, they're talking about human rights and is human lives the right to live a normal life, not part of human rights? They're always boasting of and preaching and in, in practice, this is what they're doing. Well, of course, it's just total hypocrisy. They sell uh, weapons to some of the worst human rights abusers in the world and to different armed groups. So, uh, you know, they actually fuel a lot of the conflict in, in the world instead of looking for peaceful resolutions to the problem. And as long as you have people arming uh, different sides, then uh, what, what happens is uh, that that bloodshed continues. Of course, when they talk about human rights, they really only uh, mean their own people in, in the West and Europe. They're not really uh, showing that much concern for the rest of uh, humanity. And, and, and I think this is the this is the real issue here and the Muslim world really has to stop their interference and to resolve all their problems in the region uh, into a peaceful uh, uh, settlement because you can't stop people uh, fighting and resisting for the right to independence and self-determination and to govern themselves. History has shown that people will continue to struggle and fight for that right uh, and, and you know they very rarely give up so no matter how much they bomb the people of Yemen um, mm -hmm. it's not going to work and uh, you know uh, we can't solve these problems through bloodshed and conflict and bombing people and killing innocent people this is contrary to Islam uh, uh, you know it's contrary to any notion of uh, human rights uh, and the world just turns a blind eye to it because as long as it's not uh, happening in the United States or in in Europe, uh, you know, as long as they're not fighting themselves, it's okay for the rest of the world. That's how they see it. Okay, appreciate your contribution and comments. So we had Richard Falk, Professor Emeritus of International Law with Princeton University, joined us out of Fiala Kavik, and Jahangir Mohammed, Director of the Center for Muslim Affairs from Manchester. And thank you for watching this edition of the News Review.